Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving an interesting polynomial equation. We have x to the 6th power plus x to the 4th power plus x squared plus 1 equals 0. And we're going to be looking for x values, real and complex. I'll be presenting two methods and also show you a graph at the end. So let's get started. So for my first method, I'm going to do what is commonly done, factoring. So let me rewrite the equation. And then I'm going to factor this by grouping. I notice these two terms have a common factor and these two terms have a common factor. The first group is x to the fourth times x squared plus 1. The second group having no common factors besides 1 is going to be 1 times x squared plus 1. And that just generates another common factor, which is x squared plus 1. So if we take that out, we end up with x squared plus 1 times x to the fourth plus 1 equals 0. So this is a really interesting polynomial equation because it has no real solutions. And that is for reals. <laughs> Anyways, so that's going to be interesting. I know some folks like complex numbers very much, and we've done quite a few videos lately, and I'm going to be doing more. And I'm even planning a lecture video on complex numbers from a non-rigorous standpoint, like real basic. Anyways, so how do we solve this equation? By setting each factor equal to 0, right? Basic. Okay. What about the first one? x squared plus 1 equals 0. Great. So from here we get x squared equals negative 1. And then we're going to be thinking about the square roots of negative 1. And those are easily found because you probably know if you did a little bit of complex numbers or if you've seen some of my videos that i squared equals negative 1. So x equals i would be one of the solutions. But if i is a solution, its opposite will also be a solution in the complex world because when you square the opposite of i, it's also going to be the same as i squared. Make sense? So in other words, we found the square root, the complex roots of negative 1. The complex square roots. There's two of them. In the real world, there's only one square root, which is defined as the positive square root. For example, the square root of 1 is 1. But in the complex world, we also have square roots of negative numbers. That's what makes them more interesting. So, uh, and if you didn't follow this path, you could also do it like more rigorously, write the number negative 1 as a complex number using Euler's notation. So we could basically say x squared equals negative 1. And negative 1, if you think about it, on the coordinate plane, it is basically corresponds to the point negative 1, comma 0. And that indicates, that indicates pi as our angle, and by Euler's notation, this can be written as e to the power i pi, right? Okay, so this should give us the answer, but there is more than one answer. Obviously, there's actually infinitely many. So we can found that by adding even multiples of pi to it. Okay, so we should write it this way more appropriately. And obviously, this can be simplified a little bit. You can write this as 2n plus 1 times pi i. Great, so this is negative 1, and obviously we do want to take the square root of this, and to take the square root of something like an exponential, a complex exponential, you have to basically cut the angle in half, or raise it to the power 1 half, so from here x becomes e to the power 2n plus 1 times pi i over 2. And here if you replace n with 0, you get x equals e to the power pi i over 2, and n equals 1 is going to give you x equals e to the power 3 pi i over 2. And this is just going to be i, and this is going to be negative i, because pi over 2 basically indicates on the coordinate plane you're looking at 0, 1, or i in other words. Okay? Hopefully this makes sense, so we can find the solutions, and the general method is obviously better because next we're going to take the fourth roots of negative 1. So it's going to be more interesting. x to the fourth plus 1 equals 0 is the other factor. x to the fourth equals negative 1 from here, and now we're faced with the fourth 
complex roots of negative 1. Again, negative 1 can be written as e to the power 2n plus 1 times pi i. And now, notice that we're basically referring to the odd multiples of pi, because if you look at even multiples of pi, that's going to put you at 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, which is basically 1, not negative 1. Okay, so those numbers are obviously different. And then, by uh, to find the fourth roots, all we have to do is divide the exponents by 4. So it's going to look like this. And then replace n with 0, 1, 2, and 3 to find the fourth roots. There's going to be four of them. So if you go ahead and list them, it's going to look like this. The first root is going to be e to the power pi i over 4. And then, because you, if you replace n with 0, obviously that, that's what you're going to get. And this is going to be root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i. If you do the n equals 1, x equals e to the power 3 pi i over 4, and then e to the power 5 pi i over 4, and then e to the power 7 pi i over 4. If you write all of these solutions, they're going to look like each other, except for the sign changes like the second one is going to be root negative root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i. The third one is going to be negative root 2 over 2 minus root 2 over 2i. Remember, this is the uh, third quadrant, and the last one is going to be in the fourth quadrant, which basically completes our rotation. So we're basically looking at these numbers. Make sense? And they're obviously going to be 90 degrees apart. Okay, so those are going to be all the solutions along with the i and negative i. We got six solutions, and this is a six-degree polynomial, so there should be six complex solutions. And that includes real numbers as well. Okay? Great, so that's the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick, and I will show you a graph. And we don't have to repeat the whole process. I just want to show you how it can be done slightly differently, and we're just going to copy our work from the first method. So in the second method, I'd like to uh, use substitution because these are even powers, and that basically calls for x squared equals something. How about t? t or coffee, doesn't matter, but I like t better. So from here, we get the following, t cubed plus t squared plus t plus 1 equals 0. Now, at this point, again, you can do the factoring and so on and so forth, but there is also another way to do it. Like how? We can go to multiply both sides by t minus 1, but we have to make an assumption that t does not equal 1. Why? Because t equals 1 obviously does not satisfy the original equation, right? It doesn't. Did you check? Okay. Yes. So from here, we get the following. If you multiply these two guys, hopefully you should know this. This gives you t to the fourth minus 1 equals 0. From here, we can factor t squared minus 1, t squared plus 1, and then equals 0, so on and so forth, and you get the same idea. And from here, obviously, we're going to exclude t equals 1, but everything else we're going to take. So we kind of take like t squared equals 1 gives us t equals 1 and t equals negative 1. But obviously, we have to exclude uh, t equals 1 in this case. All right? And this brings us to the graph. Yay! And this graph is kind of interesting because it is a polynomial um, that doesn't intersect the x-axis. So there are no x-intercepts. There are no real roots. And as you can see, it is decreasing for negative x values, increasing for positive x values. And you can easily prove that by differentiating this function and then looking at the first derivative, set it equal to 0, you'll find an x. Actually, 2x is better. And then what, what you're going to notice about this is inside the parentheses, you're going to get something that is non-negative. So if x is positive, the first derivative is positive. Otherwise, it's negative. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time, actually in an hour with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.